Hi everyone, Dr. Eric Chow here. Today I'm going to be talking about myopia, what it is, its prevalence, risk factors, concerns, and what you can do now to slow down the progression of myopia in your child. Myopia and nearsightedness mean the same thing. It's a condition where you see fine up close and things far away are blurry. Here's a simulator to see how your child with myopia sees in the classroom. In general, the higher the myopia, the longer the eyeball. Light rays entering an eye without myopia focuses perfectly in the retina. Light rays entering an eye with myopia focuses in front of the retina and projects the shadow, causing you to see blurry. A common question I get from parents is, my child has myopia now, how high of a myope will he or she be in the future? The Brian Holden Vision Institute has a great resource online that allows you to input your child's age and current prescription, and will then predict how your child will progress through time. So as you can see here, the prevalence of myopia in America is increasing at a staggering rate. A huge reason why we're seeing this is because of increased near work and time spent on digital devices. What are the eye health issues associated with high myopia? So the higher the myopia, the higher the chance of developing disease associated with myopia. So here we have cataracts, which is a clouding of the natural lens inside the eyes that can cause changes in vision. Cataracts can affect everyone as they age, but they often develop sooner in those who are myopic. Next we have glaucoma, which is a condition linked with high intraocular pressure that causes damage to the eye's optic nerve causing peripheral vision loss. On the bottom we have vitreous detachment and retinal detachment, and that's when the retina, or a thin layer of tissue that surrounds the entire inside of the eyeball, pulls away from its normal position and causes vision loss. And last but not least, we have myopic maculopathy, which is deterioration of the central portion of the retina and is the leading cause of severe irreversible vision loss. So what are the risk factors for myopia? We know that kids with one or two parents with myopia are more likely to become myopic. We also know that children of Asian descent are more likely to become myopic. Then we have environmental influences. Spending more time reading or being on handheld devices instead of spending time outdoors increases the likelihood of becoming myopic. Many schools are still in virtual or hybrid modes, so screen-based instruction is more prevalent now than ever, putting excessive strain on our visual systems. An interesting study found that the prevalence of myopia was higher in people with vitamin D deficiency compared to the people with normal vitamin D levels. So outdoor activities involving sun exposure for at least 90 minutes a day has also been shown to be beneficial. Especially now due to the pandemic, a lot of schools are still closed and vision screenings are just not happening as frequently as they used to before. So some of the most common symptoms that you can catch in a child with myopia include squinting, um, being very close to the TV, holding books and text very close to their eyes, headaches, excessive blinking, and rubbing of the eyes. So now we have the opportunity to slow myopia progression rather than just correct the visual symptoms and give a stronger pair of glasses year after year. So what are the treatment options? First, we have peripheral defocus or dual focus contact lenses. These are lenses worn during the day with a design that has alternating treatment and correction zones that allow for light to be focused in front of the retina rather than behind the retina. This takes away the stimulus for the eye to grow. Next, we have low-dose atropine, and these are eye drops that the child uses nightly before bed. It is thought that the atropine targets biological receptors in the retina and sclera to slow the growth of the eyeball. Last, we have orthokeratology, or ortho-K, and this is a specialty contact lens that the child wears overnight to correct for blurry vision during the day. These lenses flatten the cornea while the child sleeps, so that during the day, light passing through the reshaped cornea falls precisely on the retina, allowing the child to see clearly. If done correctly, the child does not need to wear glasses or contacts during the day to see. So these are currently the three most effective options for myopia control that should be discussed between you and your doctor so that you all can decide what the best option is for your child's eyes. So to wrap it all up, I think it will be helpful to go over a few tips I often tell parents on things they can start implementing now. We know that myopia is not all genetics and a good chunk of myopia progression is environmental. So first I recommend ambient lighting while reading, Second, I recommend all kids to spend at least 90 minutes a day outside. 
third, I recommend taking two to three minute breaks after every 20 to 30 minutes of near work. During these breaks, the child must look at something far away or do a physical activity that does not require focusing up close. So I hope this video helps you understand myopia a little bit more. It's important to understand that myopic control options do not cure or reverse myopia. All it does is it slows down the progression of myopia. You're basically providing the best options for your child when we keep the myopia low so they have the option to wear glasses, contacts, or even consider refractive surgery when they're older. Um, so if you have any questions or are, you're in the Miami area and would like to see me, my information is down below. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.